Hi there, YouTube. It is I, the one, the only, Nadia Exotica. Whew. I'm tired. I'm feeling it. I did a long... Well, first of all, I went thrifting today with my cousin, and we spent hours looking at a whole bunch of different things. I bought some wonderful kitchenware, and I'm excited to use kitchenware. Is that right? Kitchenware, right? Kitchenware? <laughs> like, but you don't wear anything. But I think it's called kitchenware anyways. Whatever. Kitchen utensils. And this is one of the things. It didn't come as a set. It's literally just one. And I'm excited to use it because it seems so amazing. I just washed it. Just did the dishes. I finally have a cheese grater. I finally have like a ice cream scoop. There's so many things that I finally have that I haven't had since moving. Um, and yes, so today was long. I did a long stream online, which wore me out. Uh, took a lot of my energy. Sorry for yawning. Vixen is great. She's actually like on the ground sleeping. Normally she sleeps on the bed. However, I am currently rearranging my bed sheets, doing a whole different set. I have a different vibe, different look that I'm going for. And I'm getting my, the new sheets and everything come tomorrow. So I'm just, everything's kind of a little out of place. My pillows are like on my lounge chair. It's a mess. Um, she's adjusting amazing. I honestly just love her so much. And um, she's been chaotic but like not not in the way you think not like a rambunctious like crazy chaotic just like just very at first kind of needy and like you know really just figuring stuff out she's in a whole new environment she's not in her little tiny room anymore so but I'm letting her know this is her domain this is she uh, there's no limits here she's a-okay and she has nothing to worry about but as she sleeps with me on my bed um she's finally like adjusted in the sense of like sleeping and being left alone for a couple hours she honestly has been amazing um there i i bought her this little gosh i don't know what i could use an ex as an example but it's this little candle holder with like these cute little legs that come out it's pretty small and it has jewels hanging from it. It's silver, but like a rustic silver. It's like kind of aged and black, blackish silver kind of. And I put her food dish on top of it because I read somewhere and someone else actually confirmed it that like cats should have elevated food apparently and water. So I need to find something. I actually have something I think that might work for her water dish, but anyways, so she's been getting pampered and spoiled and I swear I'm going to give her the life that she absolutely deserves and way better than what she's had for the first year of her life and I love her so bad. So this video is about something quite serious um, and if you are not equipped to hear about murder, um, please click off. I'm so sorry. What a fucking segue, right? But anyways, um, that's what I wanted to talk about was there's, um, it's the story of Margot and, um, it's not some sort of like news broadcasted, like story. It's not something that I, I don't think got any sort of like headlines or broadcast or anything. So I'm bringing light to it. And, um, this wasn't a personal thing that happened to me. It was more like a personal thing involving sort of my aunt, um, but not the murderer or anything, just the person who was unfortunately murdered. Um, and her name was Margo, and she was, as far as I know, a hairdresser. I don't know where. I don't know if it was Minneapolis or Indiana or somewhere I honestly don't know or Texas I don't know I believe she moved um she, but originally she had gone to school with my aunt 
in, I don't know if it was college or high school, um, somewhere back east. Um, my aunt, my aunt has always been such a welcoming and open person. She accepts literally anyone and everyone to a fault, to a fault. I've talked about this on my channel before. She's just such a nurturing person and it sometimes really bites her, you know, in the rear because of how nice and caring she is and how much she wants the best for people. And I'm just like, ugh. I'm trying, I'm the complete opposite. And I'm trying to convince her like, hey, it's good over here. Like, come to this side. <laughs> like, fuck. And, um, but, but I, I say all that because she's just so welcoming and caring. And she would never judge anyone for anything, uh, whoever they are, no matter what. And, um, so she, the story goes, I believe she was in a hair salon. She was booked a last minute appointment, as far as I know, somewhere. Um, and, uh, knew that the person's name was Marco. And apparently I think had a really good reputation as a wonderful hairdresser. And, uh, everyone pretty much recommended her in this local place. I think it was Minneapolis, Minnesota. I think I could be terribly wrong and I'm so sorry if I'm wrong. So she went to um, this appointment and um, got sat down in her chair and she was speaking with the hairdresser, but the hairdresser's back was turned, you know, gathering utensils, I believe, and um, pretty much uh, just getting ready, getting prepared for the, the cut and style. And so, once they were both turned and faced each other in the mirror, my aunt kind of was taken aback and was like, oh my goodness, are you such and such? And Margot was like, yeah, oh my goodness, is this you? And said my aunt's name. And they both were flabbergasted. My aunt hadn't seen her for forever. And, um... In case I haven't made it clear, this was a transgender woman. Um, and so she hadn't seen her since, she, like, pre-transition. And so my aunt was just floored, you know, because she apparently was a striking woman. My aunt, the way my aunt described her, um, she was just jaw-dropping. And apparently after this event, after them rekindling and re being, being reacquainted, they went out to dinner, they would go out places to eat. And my aunt told me like verbatim that everyone in that restaurant would stop and stare at her and look at her. And they were just taken aback as much as she was cause she was strikingly beautiful. My aunt had told me that she had every single surgery. Um, like she's had, a, she had had a ton of surgery, um, but looked amazing. And, uh, Obviously, I think it speaks for itself, you know, the fact that, like, she was so jaw-dropping that the whole room kind of had to, you know, double-take. And, um, yeah, so they got reacquainted and, and they, re they, like, I think Margot didn't even expect to see my aunt, like, ever again, probably, because it was just, she was an old classmate to her and, um... And I'm sure the same with my aunt. Um, so while during the, the hair salon visit, my aunt noticed that there was almost like a bodyguard kind of man, big, very hulking muscles and very stern and domineering kind of man that had apparently been Margot's lover. Um, and, uh, I believe she had encountered her, encountered her bodyguard person, guy, her man, um, afterwards, you know, a few times, had a few interactions with him. And all my aunt could really say was, last she had heard, um, Margot had gotten murdered. And that she was almost certain that the murderer was her lover. The big, hulking, burly, 
domineering bodyguard type man. Um, and hearing this from my aunt, like, and the way she talks about her, you know, and, um, how they were growing like a friendship and rekindling and, and really relearning each other as friends. It really just kind of set into stone how I felt, um, or how I feel about my trusting, you know, some call them issues. I like to call them, uh, limitations. Like I just don't trust nearly as much as I used to. I used to be a, a lot more trusting and I wouldn't say that was to a fault, but I would say that it was annoying. Uh, you know, I gave a lot of people chances they probably didn't deserve. Um, I was willing to forgive people who had done really shady things to me. And, um, it just kind of basically came to a head. And now I'm, like I say in all my videos, I'm not like that at all. And I can't get back to that point to inviting people, but not only inviting people, but like just willy nilly being super duper like my aunt is welcoming and uh, just, you know, very trusting right off the bat. I can't do that. And I think for anyone watching, not even just trans women, not even, not just anyone, like, I think it's so important to, I say this and I preach this all the time, harness your power of intuition. Harness your intuition. Strengthen it like a muscle. And really, really, really tap into it. And I don't mean like, you know, that not just that fight or flight, you know, scenario. But I mean, really fucking get a feel for what your body is saying to you. What your inside, like, mind is telling you. What your heart is telling you. When encountering people. When meeting with people. Um... When someone else brings someone new around you, really, really get a feel for your inner self and um, be it a lover, be it a friend, be it an acquaintance or a family member's acquaintance. Really, really start to analyze what it is your internal being is telling you because it's honestly so fucking important. It's just so hard breaking that Margot's life was shortened and that she suffered that really terrible ending. Um, and it just, again, like I said, it reaffirms a lot. It really, truly does. Um, and just, yeah, it's, it's really, it's a good thing to make new friends. It's a good thing to learn new people, you know, um, basically just really get down to the bottom of like, what kind of a person is, you know, there's that saying that you don't know who someone is until they, you've seen them mad, happy, sad, you know, all of it, all the above. And, um, it's true. Like you really, even then you don't really know who someone is. And it's just so sad. Like, this has been the story time and time again of trans women, you know, perishing at the hands of their lovers. It's really fucked. In particular, lovers. In particular, closeted lovers. In particular, uh, you know, just anyone they're, they've been intimate with. It's really terrible. And I encourage you to please, please, please be more cautious and just analyze, analyze people, really get a feel for who someone is <sighs> because it's just terrible. No one should have to suffer like that. And, um, I think, I think it's important that I get Margot's story out there because like, who knows? I, I see a lot of young girls on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, wherever. And they um, are just very, very, uh, I hate to say it, but careless 
about, you know, who they're with, um, who they're in relationships with, who they're allowing into their inner circle. And um, I would hate for one of them to end up in the same predicament. So I just, I don't know, I felt compelled to talk about this because it's, it's important. And I know that there's already other people talking about it, but you know, I think it's important to just keep getting the word out there. So yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or video requests, feel free to email me. My email is NadiaExotica at gmail.com. Follow all my links, including my NSFW links, at NadiaExotica.com. And don't forget to read my blog. It's NadiasCurioTrove.com slash blog. And until the next video, <clears throat> you will hear from me very soon.